Hi guys, it's Jan. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do the masks. Our local hospital asked us to make masks and my local doctor, because they, they couldn't get the masks they needed. And they're having to wear masks all the time. So the link to this pattern that I'm using will be on the video uh, uh, below in the description. And um, you need to print it out because the first couple of times you're gonna need it. After you get used to doing it, you won't need to follow it because it's relatively simple. But um, I'm going to put a link in there. And this is the the masks that they asked to be made. They asked all the, ma all the masks to be made in the large size. And I'm sure it's because they were handing them out to everybody and it everybody could use that mask. But it is more comfortable for women to have a smaller mask. And in that pattern, she has all different sizes, everything from children's to men's which is the largest and uh, right now I'm going to do the women's size she has templates for you to print out read the instructions on the page it'll tell you how to print them out I printed them out and then I transferred them on the cardstock because I knew I was going to be using them for a lot and I didn't want the paper to tear and as you can see these are rather used well used you're going to end up with three templates your first template will be the outside piece and you can lay it on your fabric. I, I turned it upside down because I'm doing multi layers. Your fabric it, for the women's mask, and barely for the men's, but absolutely for the women's mat size mask, which is the one I get the most requests for, is you can fold your material. It's folded in half. And then if you put it in thirds, the material in thirds, you can actually cut, lay the mask down and cut the mask to fit. Now she tells you to use a tracing wheel and the paper, but I don't have that. So I needed to get on these masks immediately. So I use a pencil to trace around my mask. If it's, I use a white chalk pencil, just an artist, so I happen to have these on my darker material so I can see where the cut line is. Um, I, I use all different kinds of materials. For the outside of the mask, I use different patterns just materials that I already had. It's important that you try and use 100% cotton and it must be pre-washed before you cut them out. And that's very important. I use my cute materials, again, all cotton. And then I use a cotton muslin for the, or just a white cotton. Actually kind of, a, you, if you had an old white sheet, you could do the same thing. You know what I mean? It's the same type of material, almost a percale, but it's, it's, very soft and non-irritating to the face, which is the important part. So to start out, you're going to trace your, this is the woman's main piece with the, with this ear or the seams on it. And you're going to trace one of these out. You'll trace the lining out on your white cotton material. These happen to be upside down, but if the material was turned to be like this, it's the same thing. This is your lining. And then you'll have the inside piece. Once you cut out your main piece, you need to set that aside. Cut out your lining. Then you're going to come back with your main piece. You don't need to watch me cut it out. You know how to cut out material. I'm sure. Just lay it down, draw it on, cut it out. Now, this material is, is kind of a odd one to show you on because you almost can't tell which side is the right side because this is a batik. This is Kona cotton. My doctor loves this the best. It's very soft on his face. I'm sure you've seen the pictures of the doctors with the irrita and nurses with the irritated faces from those um, packaged masks, the ones made out of the weird materials and kind of plasticky, papery material, and it irritates their faces. So you're going to lay... This is... is the outside. You're going to lay this down and I know this because I've done this enough times for your seam allowance and then there should be an inch here and this is what you're going to fold over as what they call an ear and it's going to fold over like this and make a tunnel for your ties to go through. Um, I tried the elastics and even the one with the ribbon on the back where you have 
a, a button to hook the elastics to. It still irritates the ears. And my people like the ribbon or the ties in the back. So that's how I make them. Again, I don't have the tracing wheel and the stuff to trace it out. So I just use a pencil. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to see that on camera. See if I can get it dark enough where you can see it. This is the most important right here, this particular line. Yeah, you're still not going to be able to see it. Uh, anyway, you need to do both sides. This is the outs the inside of the fabric, not or the off side, not the good side. Again, because I've cut this out so many times, I know where to lay it on here to get the si size I need and where I put it. But you follow her instructions. She's got pretty good instructions on how to do this. You're going to do the same thing with your liner. When you, when you lay your this inside piece on your liner, it goes to the edge here because there is no ear, the forward loader flap on this part. And again, you're going to do both sides. This is going to give you a sewing line so that you know that when you put the mass together, because your liner's got to go inside the pretty piece, the, the, what you're using for the outside of your mask, and it's got to lay down correctly. So the first place you're going to sew is you're going to sew along this line, and you're going to go, be sure to get your back stitch in there. You're going to go to the edge and sew all the way across. You're going to do it on both pieces. Okay, you're going to put your guide where your needle goes, right on your pencil line. First off, I'm not a seamstress. I sew, I sew my own clothes, and they're basically straight lines that I use. And I, I am no professional seamstress by any way, shape, or form. So I'm not great on the terms. I'm just doing this to help people. So, and also I've never sewn on camera, so if I knock this around with my chair, I'm sorry. Uh, first, you're going to put your back stitch in, and you're going to go as close to the edge as you need, as you can, without bunching the fabric when you go back forward. I try to get my first couple of sews in before I go because yeah, this is really going to be hard to do on camera. And you follow your pencil line. All the way down and be sure and get your back stitch in. Cut your dangling threads off. Again, you see that line is real important to get in. so that you can make these pieces match. There's a little leeway. Thank heavens. Because like I said, I'm not a seamstress. I'm a Now the next step is you're going to cut the curve. Really important. Okay, in order for this to lay flat, you need to, don't cut the thread, but cut close to it. I'm going to say about an inch apart. You mean to make little cuts along this curve. If you don't do this, the material, once it's finished, will not lay down properly and will bunch. And the whole purpose for making these cotton masks is for comfort. And they need to lay properly. Once you get them cut, 
best way I found is to pull till you can see the thread on the inside of the seam like that and push it out and lay it down where the ends meet. And that's the best way to get it that I found in this material for it to lay properly. Then you're going to have to iron it. And uh, this old iron, <laughs> It's been through centuries of crafts and everything. It does everything anywhere. And it's old. So you've got to get that iron down flat. I do it on my lowest steam. This is microfiber. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is microfiber cloth. And it works great to hold down the material. See, it kind of sticks a bit on the material. It holds it down really well, but it can't take high heat. Normally when you iron cotton, you use the highest heat. On steam, I'm using the lowest steam heat. This works fine. So now you see the iron flat. Now we're gonna take it back to the machine. And you can snip off these little ears as long as you don't snip your thread. And as you see, I have little threads and everything of all different colors on this microfiber cloth. And I, I have to get it off of that. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back over to the machine and you're going to sew this down. Lay it down and then you're going to sew about, I'm thinking it's about an eighth inch away from the edge to sew this down. And I'll take it back over there and show you. This light makes the material lay flat and is a necessary step. Okay, when you pull it apart, lay it flat, set it down. And this machine is kind of new, and it's a little newfangled for me, but I get it. I'm getting it. And I kind of spread it out, and then I've got to get my back stitch in. Again, this is kind of hard to sew with a camera sitting in the way, so please forgive me. My feet are trying to figure out how to do this. As you see, these pieces will tuck up under. As you fold them, those cuts, they're going to tuck up under themselves. As you, as you sew across them. Sorry about that. Again, this is extremely difficult to do <laughs> with the camera in the way. And again, I'm not a seamstress. It's obvious, as is quite obvious. Get your edge and be sure to get your back stitch back in. This is so the threads won't come out. Do that to both pieces. This is the second piece. And as you see, it's folded the same way with the seam to the left but because this is these are going to be facing each other they're actually in the wrong in the opposite direction so you don't have a big bunch of material underneath Okay, here's my little addition to this particular pattern. Uh, my doctors and nurses mostly wear glasses. And if you wear a mask with glasses, your face fogs up. So I add a wire to the top. And the easiest way for me to wipe, add a wire to the top is to use this piping. It's cotton. Actually, I think it's cotton poly. The tube inside is cotton, but it's as close as you can get. This might just be all cotton, and I got it on Amazon. And the link will be on the description. So I basically run it along where I'm going to sew it to get a length. Then I cut me just a little bit extra off, just in case I need it. Then I'll go back, and this is the right side. You see, that's the back side. This is the right side. At the top, you're going to lay this, oops, excuse me, you're going to lay this 
where the piping is down. Then I use beaded um, pins because these old hands have a bit of an issue taking the pins out at the machine. And I'm going to just kind of pin it along the upper edge of the mask just to hold it in place a bit while I sew it. If you're real handy, you can probably get by with just laying it down there, but I'd rather not make a mistake and have to go back and undo sewing. So I'm just going to pin it on there around this curve. Now, another thing, um, you know how we cut the curve so the material would lay down flat? We're going to cut this curve too. And she doesn't have it in her pattern that way, but I found it lays a lot better. See, it's still got a little excess. I'm not cutting that off till I get it sewn on. Okay, we're going to get this puppy under here. This is the sewing line where this pipe, this cording is sewn in. I'm going to sew right next to it. And that's a little hard to show on camera, but you're going, you'll, you'll see it when you start sewing. Be sure and get your back stitches in. Very important. And I'm going to go right along that edge. And I know people that sew over their pins on video. Me, I'm a needle breaker. <laughs> Uh, I'd break my needle if I did that, so I'm just taking my pin out before I get there. In fact, I went and bought... Eat. That was awfully close. I bought a whole bunch of sewing machine needles when I started this. Because right as I first started, I broke three, three needles. Uh, did not bode well for the future of mask making, but one... I have to figure out what I was doing. <laughs> oh, Lord. And you see, I ended up using a little bit of that, didn't I? It's not going to be quite as much cut off as you thought. Get your back stitch in there. So, ended up... So, that little excess... I need to go ahead and cut that in. Oh, I did not sew to that in, so I did. Okay, now remember, this is the right side. See? There's the right side, there's the off side. You're going to put right sides together here. <clears throat> You're going to match up this center seam right there and right there. You're going to put them together and pin them. Then you're going to go down either side. Can you see that piping, that little ridge for the piping there? You're going to go down either side, just pinning along the way to keep your material in line. And from causing an issue of wrinkling and warping inside there. So you're gonna get this sewn to get this pinned together, right sides together again. Matching the tops because you've cut them out so they'll match correctly. So what you're going to have when you sew is this inch ear on either side and your lining. Okay, and it, you should have wrong side, wrong side. Okay, remember, wrong side, wrong side now that you've got this together. Because you've sewn this piping onto the white material, you can see where your sew spot was and you're going to basically sew right on top of it. Sorry, I didn't mean to kick the camera. So your thread line actually gives you a guide. On where to sew. You don't want to sew over that little cord. Because the tube that the cord is in is where you're going to run that co that wire. So you want to stay away from that cord. You're sewing just on the edge of it.
don't forget your back stitch. Now, probably in the world of sewing, I'm sure the seamstresses out there, if anybody saw this, would have an absolute coronary on how I sew, but, you know, sorry. If I can get the job done, if I can get the job done. So, probably should go back and pin this, but I don't because it lays well. So, now we're going to, yes, we're wrong side out, and now we're going to flatten it out. We've sewn the top together, and we're just going to... Come here, thread. Remember those pencil lines? You're going to lay your guide on the pencil line. Get your back stitch in. And I don't care. Fold your material in so that it, it pushes it in and it's together. And I don't care what it looks like. You're going to sew on this pencil line. Because that's the line you drew to match the pattern. And sometimes... My machine has an issue, and the, you're not going to be able to see the pencil line where the seam is, so you stop right on the seam, and then turn your material. Lift your foot up, turn the material, so that you can sew back down this edge. It sure took me a while to get used to a machine that lifts everything up for you. Okay, here's another little hint that I do that she, I, I don't remember, is in her description. But these are still curves, and they cause a binding when you, I'm sorry, cause a binding when you uh, turn the material over. So you're going to, again, snip about every inch or so. Do not cut your threads where you sewed. This makes it lay flatter. And it doesn't really look like there's a curve there, but there is. When you get your, uh, pattern cut out, you'll see there's a little bit of an edge. Okay, so now you're inside out. You're just going to turn this right side out. Again, pulling apart at the seams to get it to lay correctly. And you're going to have to iron this. The neat thing about this mask and this pattern is it's shaped to the face. Which makes it so much more comfortable to wear. Well, that didn't iron right, because this iron, if you leave it on longer than a couple of minutes, it doesn't do an automatic shut off. It kind of does a weird reset, and it won't, when you turn it on, it won't come back on again. So I had to unplug it and wait, and then redo it. So now you see it's ironed. always feel better about ironing this because I feel like it's helping make it, I don't want to say sterile, but definitely more sterile than it was before. Oops. See, I think I folded over so I can iron it, so I can sew it. Okay, now back to the machine. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, again, this is all part of finish work so that this washes well and is reusable. What we're going to do is sew here, but because we have this piping here, we're going to sew on this side so we make sure we get on we get on the blue material or the uh, good material. And we're going to do our back stitch. And then we're going to stay about an eighth inch inside the blue line. And you see, you're going to have to pull a bit when you get to this top of the nose piece. 
go slow around there because you got double seams in there. And you don't want to break a needle because you're going through too thick a material. Hmm, wonder where I broke my needle the first couple of times. Yeah, you don't need to wonder. Now, what this does is it helps hold the seams down. I might have to do that because I've left my scissors over at the other table. This is going to hold these seams down and keep the material from bunching when it washes. Again, this is so it's reusable. These masks are not N95 masks, nor did the hospital, nor the doctor's office want N95 masks. They use those when they're doing... They don't want to waste them. There's so few of them. They use those when they're doing swabs and checks on people that are a suspect. But otherwise, these masks are used all day long. I, uh, most of them do an AM and I need two masks. They'll do an AM and a PM mask because, of course, they take their mask off when they go to lunch. So now, basically, that's the mask. You can see now it's taking shape and you can really see what it looks like. And again, see, you really need this iron. Okay. All right. So our next step is this ear is what they call it right here. We fold it to hit the liner and then fold it one more time. And we're going to iron it to hold it there so that when we sew it, it's easier to sew. This keeps you from having any raw edges that will fray. Okay, we got that iron. Oops. Now, we're gonna put our wire in. This is, I just happen to have these. This is, I'm a crafter. I'm not a seamstress. Okay, these are just tools I had for jewelry making. Okay, so the wire is basically for the nose. So it doesn't have to go. I prefer a little bit longer than this, but this is the last piece that I cut off of a long strand of it. Um, you're going to want to go from over the nose. This edge will poke right through cloth. So you need to take these are rounded pliers. Get as close to the edge as you can and make a loop. You see your loop? Then the loop is actually kind of too big to go through that material. So you're going to bend it back. So you've got that type of loop. I get to take these flat ones because I have them and make sure that it's flat, that there's not an edge sticking out. So when you push it through, it doesn't catch on anything. Again, there we're going to make this little curve and then we're going to Take it so that the end piece is in the middle, right there, like that. And flatten it. Then I try to get it kind of as, this is craft wire. I just happen to have it around. I have no idea what gauge it is. Uh, possibly one millimeter, possibly. Definitely not any bigger than that. Okay, so again, see this is a piece of cotton cording sewn over cotton material. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide it on the front side of the mask. See, this is the front side of the mask. We're going to slide it in the hole. Hey, sure we're going to slide it in there. Come on, dude. I might have gotten that sewn a little close to the edge, so we'll go to the other end. There you go. Going to slide it in the mask. Okay, so you don't have any tool, basically, to shove it up in there. So you're going to come over here and push it through, grab hold, and then slide it in. Okay, so now the wire, try to get the wire centered. Then you're going to go so, you can see where the wire stops right there. Again, you don't want it to go to the edge because when we go sew this, we have to sew that piping shut so the wire can't slide out in the wash. And you're going to do it on both sides. Okay, back to the machine. Okay, this remember we ironed it and folded it over.
Get your back stitch in there. And I'm e just even less than an eighth of an inch on a seam there, if possible. I just want to get to the edge so I have plenty of tube in there to put my ribbon. Now I'm going really slow here because I want to make sure I get a couple of sew-ins in there on that piping. Again, we're going to go back out. And there. Now we still have a tube that we can slide the ribbon through. And I'm going to go, even though I normally would sew like this, because of the direction, I want to end up on that piping. So I'm going to turn it around, which I normally wouldn't sew like this, but turn it around this direction. Get my back stitches in. Oops. A little bit more speed on there. Must have hit that. And again, if the wire was down here, I'd be ended up breaking my needle on the wire. Hmm. Think some, I've done that before? And I'm going to go one stitch at a time to make sure I get in that piece. And then just sew off the edge. Now I'm going to go trim my threads and show you how to do the ribbon. Okay, I have two pieces of ribbon cut 36 inches long. People can trim the ribbon for however's comfortable for them. This is that loopy ribbon. It's 50 cents a spool. This is not the loopy one, but they just as an example. And it's like 50 cents a spool at Michael's. And I have all different colors. Again, this is what you want washable. The ribbon is polyester. It's not cotton. I, the cotton is sold out. I can't find cotton, uh, herringbone cotton ribbon that, like you use on surgical stuff. Anywhere, it's all sold out. So I'm using this ribbon from Michaels. Now, the ends, you don't want to fray. So what you're going to do is you're going to heat the ends. Easiest, cheapest way to do that is with a candle. You do not stick the ribbon in the candle. You'll end up with a burned colored end that's totally gross. So you're going to get it close. And if you watch it, you can actually see it shrink. And there, it's just the color of the ribbon. And it's heated and the end is sealed. Again, you don't, see, you get, all you gotta do is get it close. You don't want to get it anywhere near that flame. And done. Okay, this is just a big eyed embroidery floss rounded I think they call it a ballpoint needle. It's soft. It's not sharp. And I use it because it's just easier to thread that way. Slip it through the loop. On the inside of the mask, slide it through. Pull your ribbon through. And kind of hold it up so the edges are even. Do, obviously, both sides that way. So they're hanging out equidistant. Now back to the machine. Okay, what we're gonna do here, real quick, is we're setting the ribbon in the mask so that it doesn't slide. If it slides, they can't tie it correctly. So you go back to the middle. You don't wanna go all the way from top to bottom. You wanna just do right in the middle because that gives the math, mask a chance when you tie it to gather a bit. So, I'm gonna backstitch. About six stitches. Go forward. Then go back again. And that sets the ribbon. Oops, I should have given more thread for that. That sets the ribbon into the mask. And then do that obviously on both sides. This seems like a lot of tedium, I realize, for these masks, but this is really important. What you're doing for these frontline workers is making their life just a little bit easier. They're risking our, their lives for us. So we need to make sure that we're doing our very best for them.
All right, now I'm going to show you how to tie it. As a surgeon, these pins represent the ear. This is a surgeon's way of tying the mask where they'll go in front of the ear and over the top of the ear and tie in the back. This prevents any issues with the, it causing irritation to the ear. You see the wire molds over the top of the nose so that the glasses can sit down on, on top of it and it's tucked under the chin. The second way to tie this is, and I don't like this method because I have a weird thing about my neck and, and strangulation. It just is, I don't know, it's just weird. It drives me nuts. But a lot of them will tie them around the back of their neck like this. And you see how this gives it a chance to gather. And you've got it tucked under your chin. This is a foam diagram. This is not a human body. It ties better on a human body. But our nurses didn't like the elastic. And my doctors didn't like the elastic because it cut their ears after 10, 15 minutes. And they're wearing these 8 hours and 10 hours and 12 hours a day. So you want to make them as comfortable as possible for the people who are wearing them. Thank you. And I hope your frontline workers appreciate the work you're going to. If you have any questions, please email me, messenger me. I know you're probably on my Facebook. Messenger me and let me help you in any way that I possibly can. Or if you have any great ideas to help me, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. If no one's told you they love you yet today, I do.